Hello guys, welcome to Medicare. In this video, we are going to be studying about the properties of cardiac muscle. So, the properties of cardiac muscle are divided into two parts. These are the properties which are seen in a beating heart and the properties which are seen in a silent heart. So, I am going to be dealing with both of these properties separately. So, the first one is about the beating heart. First, I'll list the number of properties, then I'll explain you some of the important properties. The first one is automaticity. Second one is rhythmicity, conductivity, contractility, excitability, long refractory period, and the seventh one is distensibility. Now, I'll list the properties of a silent heart. It behaves as a functional syncytium. There is a property known as extrasystole and compensatory pause. The cardiac muscles behave accordingly to the all or none law. There is a phenomenon known as staircase phenomenon and two graphs that is load versus velocity graph and length versus tension graph. So now I will be dealing with some of the important properties of the heart. The first one is about the long refractory period. So what is refractory period? The refractive period is a period during which the muscle does not evoke an action potential no matter how strong is the stimulus. The refractive period is usually divided into two parts, the absolute refractive period and the relative refractive period. So usually the absolute refractive period lasts for about 200 milliseconds and the relative refractive period lasts for about 50 milliseconds. So, if this is the normal action potential of the heart, this phase is known as the absolute refractory period, in which the stimulus of any strength would fail to evoke an action potential. This phase or period is known as the relative refractory period, in which a stronger stimulus may evoke an action potential. So if this is the action potential of a cardiac muscle and this is the mechanical response which the action potential gets. As we can see this is the absolute refractory period and this is the relative refractory period. So we can see that the duration of action potential of a cardiac muscle is almost similar to the mechanical response produced by the action potential. So, the mechanical response almost falls in the refractory period of the action potential. So, two mechanical responses cannot be merged. So, the cardiac muscle can't be tetanized. So, the next important property I am going to be dealing is extrasystole. compensatory pause. So, I'll tell you what happens. Suppose these are the contractile response for the stimulus produced by the normal SNO. When a sufficiently stronger stimulus is applied to a cardiac muscle in the relative refractory period, there is an extra and earlier contractile response. This is known as the extrasystole, as it is an extra one. And now the natural stimulus which arises from the SA node falls in the refractory period of the extrasystole. So it can't evoke a contractile response and it results in the formation of a compensatory pause. During the compensatory pause, there is increased filling of blood 
increases the end diastolic volume, there is usually a higher degree of response following the compensatory pause. That is called post extrasystolic potentiation. This is in accordance to the Frank Stalling law of heart. The next important property I am going to discuss is all or none law. All or none law suggests that the magnitude of response remains same irrespective of the strength of stimulus. So it means that if an action potential or a stimulus is given to a muscle fiber, it either responds optimally or it does not respond at all. So imagine this is the response of the cardiac muscle to different stimulus. If a subthreshold stimulus is given, there is no contractility at all. But if a threshold or optimal stimulus is given, there is a response. But if a higher stimulus is given, then also the magnitude of response is equal to that of the threshold one. So, the next property I am going to discuss is known as the staircase phenomenon. If a cardiac muscle is subjected to repeated stimulus, in an interval less than 10 seconds, the magnitude of response increases. So why does this happen? In the first step, when the stimulus is given and there is a response that is the contraction. For contraction to take place, there has to be calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. But when the interval is less than 10 seconds, all the calcium cannot be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, there is a residual calcium. During the first contraction, there is increase in temperature, increase in enzymatic activity and decrease in viscosity. All these factors will benefit the second contraction. So, there is an increase in the response. So, this is about some of the important properties relating to the cardiac muscle. If you like this video, like, share and subscribe to my channel and support me. Thank you.